Hello, I'm Dong Doon, director of Dio Digital Lab. Today, I will explain about things related to 3D printers in digital prosthetics. I'm practicing at a dental clinic in Nampodong, Busan. I'm also serving as the R&D director at DO Digital Lab. I'm observing a paradigm shift at the dental laboratories. As resin printers and metal printers have been introduced, dental laboratories are gradually changing from analog to digital. Metal printers, in particular, are a bit expensive, so they are mainly used by large labs or in joint purchase consortiums. This equipment is called Profeta, used by the dental lab that I work with. This equipment enables 20 to 60 micrometer layers. So I set the model made by the 3D printer into the mouth. The margins and everything fit well. Things that were difficult with the analog method a long time ago, such as a long bridge, are now possible. So it's necessary to establish a specific plan when you purchase a printer like this. The precision has improved significantly. It's necessary to consider the productivity and usability as well. I am currently very satisfied with my purchases. The precision is very good. I originally had just one, but I ended up purchasing one more. These are things to consider before you purchase a printer. This is a small equipment that most clinics would consider buying. It's necessary to think for yourself which company you will purchase from and why you want to purchase it. The most difficult consideration is in choosing which product from which manufacturer to buy. Since there are various companies, it's important to check the specifications, after-sales services, and whether it's compatible with the ingredients I use. I'm going to explain what to take note of when comparing specifications between 3D printers. First, there are many different types of 3D printers. In the past, printing was done by milling. But now printing is understood as additive manufacturing. First, you do the modeling using CAD. Then you get an STL file, which you slice into thin layers using CAM software. Now the file would be a compilation of many thin slices. And then you sent the file to a 3D printer. The printer prints each layer one by one, and these layers stack up one by one to create the end product. This is a material extrusion 3D printer. This uses the material extrusion method. It's also the filament method. It comes out from the nozzle like this one by one. This is a YouTube video. From 45 seconds, this is from a different company. Do you see the coil here? Let's speed it up a bit. The filament comes out from the nozzle like this and stack the layers. So you can do black color printing. You stack up the layers to make it. The printing proceeds like this as the molding plate below moves down one step or as the nozzle moves up. Then there is a post-treatment process. It comes out unevenly in the size of the nozzle. So there is the problem that you need to really work on the post-treatment. 
The printer's filament method is called the FDM method, or fused position modeling. Next is the SLA method. You see a bath in the resin container. This printer creates layers by penetrating the bath with a laser. This one is difficult to understand by looking at a static photo. Here is a video. This is from this company. Let's take a look. I'll fast forward. It's sending to the CAM software. It sends it in the layer method, like this. Do you see the lasers passing through? It's at two times speed, so it's going a bit fast. It cures when you shoot the laser. Then, as it goes down one step, it cures and floats like this. You can see that there are many supporters hanging. Those are called supporters. It's used a lot commercially as well. It also needs post-treatment. The supporters on the surface and other microscopic things need to be removed. The finished shape looks like this. And there is the polyjet method. It's called material jetting. The method is similar. Through the tube, there is the model material that becomes the supporter, and the supporter material comes out together. So it gets extracted. Let's check this through a video too. This product is called Stratasys. Let's watch it together. It's a YouTube video. I'll increase the speed again. It cures one layer at a time, and you can see that it sprays out from the nozzle like this. I did speed it up quite a lot, but it produces very precise end product made with very precise material. It goes through a post-treatment. This printing method is called polyjet. There is also a 3D printer called photopolymer. It's called the DLP method. In general, all small printers and printers that can be used in the clinic are like this. The previous one is very expensive, so it's hard for small to medium-sized clinics to have. From the projector on the bottom, light is emitted to cure one layer at a time. Let's watch another video. ProBoZ from Dio uses this method. Let's watch the 3D printer promotion video. This is the prosthetic material called Dio Navi P-Max. You add an appropriate amount to the bath on top. You operate it using a touchscreen.
For surgical guides, I store them together and arranged them by name like this. There were times it was useful later on for reimplantation or prosthetics, so I save them. I use the 3D printer to make surgical guides. I also use it for orthodontics. This was made by Dio and brought in. The printer I have doesn't have this much accuracy. This is an orthodontic bracket for the lingual side. That's why the number 21 is written on it, and it's called a jig. Customized brackets for each tooth are made by writing the tooth number on them so they don't get mixed up. This paper was published in the JOC Journal by a professor at Busan University who worked with Director Bei ki Sun, the research director of DIO. It was introduced as a cutting-edge product, which attracted a lot of attention in 2017. And it was named Orthonavi. This is a YouTube video. It's a promotional video made by Dio. You'll understand easily if you watch it. And what can we do with a 3D printer in the clinic? And you might be thinking, do I really need to buy this now? What's important is your will. And you need the will of your hygienists and the will of your dental technicians to be open to try digital dentistry. Even if you have the will, it will be frustrating if your staff don't follow. And you need patience. The cost has to be reasonable. You would need to turn your clinic into a digital-ready clinic first. A digital-ready dental clinic refers to a clinic where the input and design output are all done in a digitalized process. For the input, you first need an oral scanner. For the design, you need a CAD software. For output, you need the corresponding CAM software milling equipment, or a 3D printer. 
This is a scanner for input. I happen to own a variety of scanners. One by one. I have a Seric one too. I also have Trios 3 and Trios 4 supplied by Dio. If I have only one, I can't treat multiple patients at the same time. So I use multiple scanners. And you need software for design. Our dental technician is doing the design like this. For the output, you need a 3D printer. I don't have a milling equipment. I outsource this part. The milling equipment called Probo Z mills zirconia. And on the left is Serex MCX. We make it in-house with this equipment. The metal milling equipment we outsource and not have one in the clinic. We outsource for the metal milling equipment. I'll talk about how and when I use it. If a patient who already has an implant comes and I want to place a new additional implant, it will be nice to make the two together. So you will want to match the aligning path. This patient got a prosthesis in the 40s. I placed one. And I made the prosthesis like this. And time passed, and the tooth in front of it got damaged. So another implant needed to be placed in front of that tooth. And I wanted to align its path with the previous implant I had placed. If the path can be aligned like this, the prosthesis will go a lot smoother. So where the previous implant was, I place one implant, then design two fixtures with the same path in front, and create the prosthesis as one later. You might wonder if you need to purchase these equipment right now. These are 3D printers sold on AliExpress in China. It's in the Korean currency. It's about 100,000 to 300,000 won. Meaning you can buy them for 100 to 300 dollars. So I think the price has dropped as much as it could. Probo Z from Dio has improved performances than the previous model Probo. And the speed got faster too. And more than anything else, it's important that there are many materials compatible with the equipment. It also comes with a slicer program. And once the product is extracted from the 3D printer, you need a light source to cure it. Dio has a curing device, and the design changed a little. It cures with UV light, but if the light source and the object are far apart, it doesn't cure well. So the new model has a flat shape, suitable for the dental purpose, so that the prosthesis can be cured well. So my answer to the question, do I buy it now, is buy it right away. Let's look at where it can be used. The usage depends on what materials there are out there for 3D printer. This one is used for final restoration. It's also used for long-term provisional bridge and digital denture. I call this the clone. You can repeatedly make copies. This is the greatest advantage of 3D printers. Let's look at the materials for final restoration. This is castable resin. Resin that is printed gets burned into metal. It can be made into a gold crown or metal for PFM. 
메탈로 만들 수 있는 거죠. So I made a gold crown by printing. On the left, the yellow part is the printing material, and a gold crown was made. I also made the three units on the right side. A gold crown also can be made by scanning. And for implants, I used a 3D printed wax for an implant. I made a PFM. The occlusal surface was made of metal. I attached the face on the side with porcelain. 3D printing is possible since the occlusal surface is metal. The disadvantage of zirconia, such as occlusal abrasion or fractures, can be avoided. Also, since 3D printing models have been used for a long time, what's important in the printing material for models is how similar the design is to the real thing. If you look at the table above, the green color indicates that there is almost no difference from the real thing. It's called the trueness, referring to how similar it is to the real thing. It's very close. With a scanned model in a digital form, you can make a physical model and make prostheses like zirconia and gold inlay as well. Also, you can capture a sheet like this to make things like whitening trays or transparent orthodontic devices. The picture on the right is a material selected for the printing model designed to create this occlusal shape in an edentulous implant. And it's also useful for long-term provisional restoration. For a full arch prosthesis, you would expect that the provisional restoration to be used for an extended time, right? So I use the DioNavi PMAX material for long-term provisional restoration. I made a video of it being used in my clinic. The process is the same as the one you saw in the promotional video. The printing has finished, now it needs to be taken out for post-treatment. This cleaning is done with ultrasonic and isopropyl alcohol. and you cure it with abutment connected. Then it fits even more accurately. This is the curing device. The light emits from the top and bottom, so it has the advantage of curing very well. I think this is the advantage compared to products from other companies. When the curing is done, the supporter parts are removed. Next is the pre-preparation scan function. Test the occlusion like this. And we want to copy the patient's real natural occlusion. If I were using the analog method, I would use a customized incisal guide table or FGP technique. So a very complex method was used to maintain the patient's anterior guidance. 
So how can the anterior guidance be moved to the final prosthesis? So the articulator uses what is called an incisor guidance table. I want to make this happen in the posterior area. In that case, you need to use an articulator that is semi-adjustable or higher. So, we make a guide table with resin like this for each patient. And the other technique is called the FGP technique. FGP stands for Functionally Generated Path. As the patient's opposing teeth move naturally, they form occlusal points on the opposite side. It's a method of transferring as is. For this method, I took an excerpt from a published journal. Add the resin. It's number 36 and number 37. Place the resin here and apply the function. If you apply the function, it'll shape the resin. Then, take the pattern and transfer it to the articulator. Then the tooth shape will transfer as it is. This is called functional generated path. So you can see that the analog method is a bit more complex. But in the digital method, there is this function called pre-preparation. It allows you to conserve the shape of the original dentition before prepping. Let me show you a case. So this patient was pretty senior. I wanted to maintain the canine guidance while prepping the tooth. There was severe tooth decay, so it required a crown. So before the prep, I do an oral scan. I take an oral scan first before doing any treatment. Scan the mouth. You see this light blue here. The blue color shows the previous data. We align it to this when we place the prosthesis on number four. Then it designs automatically. And you delete the necessary parts accordingly. If you modify it so that the blue doesn't show and make it based on the blue color, then the patient's existing occlusion or the tooth shape will be transferred as they are. And you make the crown. Let's look at this case. This patient got implants in the mandible but before extraction. I could take the oral scan to keep the original teeth as digital data. And after extraction and placing implants, I load the copy of the tooth on the right side. There are teeth on the far right side. Then, in this way, you can place the prosthesis while maintaining the VD or occlusion. This is with the posterior prosthesis in place. If you place the anterior part, then you can make it without changing the VD and maintaining a similar anterior guidance. And it can't fit perfectly inside the mouth. And there will be some wear as it functions in the mouth. Then you want to move this tooth to the final prosthesis. Then you can scan here and use the pre-preparation scan function to move it to the final prosthesis. Then, the long-term provisional on the left and the zirconia prosthesis on the right will be reproduced in a similar form. This is the next case. Let's look at this patient. Implants were placed in the molar area, but I left that tooth in the anterior part to maintain the VD. This is with the 3D printed tooth. It has a digital abutment. This is used as a provisional currently. This provisional prosthetic is used for two to three weeks, or at most two months. 
I want to transfer this occlusion. I want to transfer it to the final prosthesis. There was no way to do this in the analog method. So I do a pre-prep scan on this. Let's take a look. On the scanner menu, select pre-preparation scan. and scan the provisional restoration in this state. Then the teeth that were actually functioning in this patient's mouth get transferred as they are. And select the corresponding area. and delete the parts that are not fully erased. If you touch here, then the tooth number gets designated. Scan again with the scan body attached. Then you will get two files. If you see this image, you see the scan body here. The blue color on top is the copy of provisional restoration. So the tooth gets designed automatically. Then you can transfer the occlusion as is by adjusting it like this until you can no longer see this blue color. So this is how the automatic designing program works. The design then gets transferred to zirconia. I go through several modification steps. If the first provisional is not satisfactory, or if I want to lift or lower the VD a little bit, then I print the provisional a few times and try them on. And if it breaks during use, I can place the ones that I already printed out. You can think of them as clones, like I mentioned earlier. You can make tens of the same one. So if the patient finds the occlusion that's comfortable, this gets transferred to the zirconia. The final prosthesis is made like so on the right. This is an x-ray. So switching from long-term provisional bridge to final restoration became very easy. DIO currently supplies final restorations as well. There is the DIO Navi PMAX material for crowns and bridges. Currently, the strength is greater than that of gold alloy and slightly greater than that of Vita Enamic. You can consider it to be similar to Enamic. Those who have used Enamic would know. And I think this is on similar level now. The characteristic of this material is you can see the strength of various materials shown in stages on the left image here. The PMMA is a very low strength level, and PEAK material is the strongest. Recently, PEKK material has been released. However, it has reached a strength that is equal to, or similar to, or slightly higher. You can make several prostheses, because the cost is inexpensive. You can make one crown for around 700 won, or about 40 cents. And you can make one in 25 minutes. So the advantage is that you can print it out at any time. You can also stain with the resin, and reproduce the gum shape. You place the gum on top of what's printed. There's the advantage that you can add external stain. Let's look at this case. The model was made through extraction and preservation surgery for about six months. And six months later, the implant was placed. And designed it.
The next case is when you want to maintain the anterior guidance. So, how do you transfer the provisional occlusion to the final prosthesis? This is not an implant case. You make the designed shell first, scan the mouth, and use this as a guide to cut out the gum. It's not about cutting the gum arbitrarily, but determining how much to cut by placing this and using it as a guide. So proceed with gingivectomy. Endo is finished. Five weeks after placing the provisional. I replace this multiple times until I get the shape I want. I waited about 10 weeks for the gum to heal. The final prep was done at 10 weeks. And now, I want to transfer the shape of this final provisional. Create the occlusal points. Do you see the red dot there? Create the occlusal points and transfer this to the final prosthesis. It was used for about four months, and I used zirconia for the final restoration. This is a different case. This is a case done by one of DORND directors Jung Dong-gun. He wanted to place an implant here, so he extracted and placed the implant using a surgical guide. This is with the provisional loaded. You put stain in this state and form the external shape. This can be done in the mouth directly at the chair side. So if the shade doesn't match, it can be corrected right away. That is it. Thank you for listening. See you in my lecture part two.